lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Con. My name is Ryan, and back with me again, one of my favorite writers in comics, Joshua Williamson, is here. Very stoked to have you back on, dude. Yeah, man. Always good to talk to you. It's been it's been like a really long time, but uh, I know it for a little bit. But yeah, we were finally able to pull it together. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny because like I always feel like it hasn't been that long. And then when I go to post the new one, I'm like, oh, shit, yeah. it has been like over a year and a half, maybe two years. Yeah, sometimes. Been a while. Well, you know, we've both been busy. That's yeah. that's really what down to. You know? but, but yeah. you've been killing it, dude. Like you've been doing so many fucking awesome books, you know, whether it's, you know, you've been doing Superman, which you got a cool arc that's coming up, a crossover. Oh, yeah. Awesome Brainiac crossover. Yeah. Superman. And, and uh yeah dude it's been uh it's been a lot of fun i mean we're doing something really different with brainiac but yeah it's been it's been cool and, and uh rafa sandoval is drawing all of it and it's just uh we're drawing the majority of it i should say and it looks dude people are gonna be really blown away when they see it yeah i'm stoked dude i think the ones that i'm really stoked to talk to you about today though are green arrow which yeah. i think we've talked about our mutual love for that character and yep, then the yep. Energon universe that you've been doing with the G.I. Joe stuff. So um, let's talk Green Arrow first, because when you when the book was first yeah. announced, and I don't know if we got this on camera, I'm, I'm blank. No. What did I, say? I think it was just a mini series at that point. So oh, it wasn't yeah. even supposed yeah. to be an ongoing. And now it got upgraded to that. So uh, the funny thing is, dude, is so like when I started working on it, I had a priority. I had a goal. I had a like, well, here, here's what I, I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to tell a story. And this isn't like super secretive because it's and you already, if you're pretty caught up and you kind of know like what's been going on. But I was like, the biggest priority I had was the family and like doing a family union, getting all the characters back. Right. And then it was like, obviously there was some Waller stuff. And then it was really about Merlin and, and Ollie's, you know, feud with Merlin. And, but at the end of the day, it was really about, that family you know and getting that family back together and so i wrote issue one and i wrote issue one in like three days like that but mostly it was because i knew it like i knew that issue i knew exactly what i wanted to say with it what i wanted to do with it i knew it was about leanne i knew it was about roy uh i remember when i when i was doing the page breaks for it my editor at the time was like he was like this is a lot of roy <laughs> he's like did you trick me into doing a self book a self roy book and i was like no, 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 it's a family book. It's it's about the Green Arrow family, you know? And I was like, listen, man, this is the, you know, he he got it, but I was like, this is this is a priority right here. Like this this scene with Leanne and just get into it. Like, don't, let's not drag this part out. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. And then use as a catalyst to get to the mystery of what's going on with him and why he's been stranded in space in an alien world. And so when I started writing it up, like, you know, I basically plotted out the first six issues of what I wanted to do with it. And... I very quickly realized, even in the plot, that I was like, oh, damn, dude, I'm going to run out of room. Like, there's no way I can do all this in six issues and to do it right. And even then, with you know, there, there's still some scenes that I feel are a little compressed, you know, they're a little more compressed than I like. But also, what's funny about Green Arrow is, is that, like, Green Arrow is only um, 20 pages every issue. So it's like, you know, Superman is 22, Batman and Robin is 24 um green arrow is like how flash was it's just 20 pages and so i have to be really smart about the economy of it but as i've you know been working the last few years one of the things i've really picked up on is like i as a writer need room to breathe you know so even when i was working on it, i was like damn damn what do i do and so really early on i was i i think after it was greenlit at six issues maybe like two months after that i was asking them can we get this extended to 12 can i get this extended to 12 and they were like, that feels doable depending on the sales of issue one and the hype. And, you know, there, there was a lot of stuff they were they were really looking at and being like, is this possible? And um, at the time, it was a weird moment in terms of which projects were getting greenlit and which ones weren't, you know? And I, I think I said, maybe since before on, to you, or I think I said this publicly, but it's like, before I got the job on Green Arrow, you know, I think I told you this story, right? Where it was like, there were multiple people who had tried yeah. for it, you know? And it just didn't work out for multiple reasons. Like, so I know I have I have a ton of friends who had tried for it. And one was uh, pretty close, you know? There were, there were two, actually, and they got pretty close and it just didn't work out. And it just felt like, you know, that was one of those moments where it was like, okay, well, green light it if you do it. And I was like, oh, damn, I don't, I don't remember my schedule, but I love this character so much. You know, I've wanted to write this book my whole life. How can I say no? 
But so, you know, I, I basically went to them and they were like, all right, well, let's see how the sales on issue one works. So I was went overdrive promoting the book, promoting the book, promoting the book. And also, I, I knew we were doing something special with it. You know, we were doing something that I, I feel like Green Arrow fans wanted. Mm-hmm. And it was going to be hard because it's like I was, you know, with Superman, I was going for a wider audience and being trying to be accessible. But Green Arrow, I knew what I was doing. And I was like, this is a book for Green Arrow fans. Like, I knew that. Yeah, I knew what I was doing. I knew it was going to be not as easy to read for somebody who had never read Green Arrow before. I was going to try to get the information you needed. But that emotional weight was really going to go to people who didn't, who, who knew what was up, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then I think when issue one, man, I feel like we found out actually pretty early I think they knew pretty early. Like, I think right when issue one came out, we knew we were going to get the 12 issues. Um, And then I feel like sometime around issue four or five, they told us it was uh, an ongoing or it was potentially going to be an ongoing. You know, part of my pitch to them, it actually helped me out because I was like, oh, I have this stuff with Merlin I need to do. And and I'm still not done reintroducing these characters or bringing in, in everybody. And I still knew that, like I knew, I knew what I needed to do with Ollie, which we'll get to. <laughs> like I knew what I needed to do with Ollie, and I knew where I needed in. But then we'd also been building the subplot about Waller and how Ollie and Waller have this like really long history. And it's funny because if you go back and look at like you know some of the New Fifty Two stuff and how Ollie was on that Justice League team that Waller created, and then you know if you read No Justice, Waller and Ollie were the ones that were looking for the Justice League after they were taken and stuff. Like, they were together for that piece of the story. So it's like they have this history together. And I was like, well, you know, we're building to the stuff that, that Wade is doing. And so I was like, I said to them, I'm like, well, if we do get an ongoing, then the book will connect in with the event, with uh, with Absolute Power, which has been announced already, so I'm not, like, spoiling anything. Um, and I think the cover, the cover issue 13 is out where it has, you know, Ollie working with Waller and stuff. And there's like, you know, you'll, you'll see there's some shenanigans going on, but you'll see. And, and why Ollie would ever do that. Like why he would take that on. And uh, yeah, man. So it was just, it's been a roller coaster, but it's like uh, the, the ending to issue 12 has been something. And again, 12 won't be out for a few months now, but like two months, I think. But that was what I was building too. So it's like, but yeah, we got that. Yeah. So, you know, we got that, that ongoing and, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty crazy. Like I know all those little beats and stuff, but at the end of it, at the end of all this stuff, I'm just really happy that I got to write this character, but also that I got to bring all these characters back. You know, that are like that was always the priority: build the family, and that was again like now I have the room to really do it in a uh, in a cool way. You know, to really spend some time with those characters that I wouldn't have been able to do if it was just six issues. Yeah, no, I mean, I think from the beginning, I was like, I was keeping my fingers crossed because i wanted to see a green arrow ongoing there hadn't been one for a couple yeah. of years and yeah. you know like you bringing the family aspect back really like i mean that that kevin smith run that led into the judd brad Meltzer and then judd winnick like yeah. Yeah. that was such a great run and i recently had re- i reread it leading up to you launching green arrow so then when that came yeah. out i was like oh my god like this is you know has that same vibe that same energy and so i'm like yeah how how do you condense that into six issues but when you were doing it like and you had your kind of like story beats in your plot did you plot with the intention of 12 and like how much of that has kind of morphed knowing that you have you've extended past the 12 the end of the basically issue 12 has never really changed like issue 12 as a whole um you know we because of some scheduling stuff uh, I had to basically like do the onomatopoeia issue, which was awesome because I got to work with Phil Hester, who even before he was on Green Arrow was one of my favorite artists. And so he was somebody I always really liked working. I, I've always loved his work. I've always wanted to work with him. And we've always kind of like been around each other, you know, but like I've never been able to work together. And so now that I get to work with him on a Green Arrow, and he, he obviously did some stuff in the first six issues. He did all of issue eight by himself. And then um, he has more stuff coming. Um, and like he did that cover issue 13 and you're going to see like more stuff from him with Green Arrow. But uh, I was even looking at some pages from him today and I was just like, man, this dude's so good. So good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, like, I had to, I, you know, there's definitely been moments where I've had to like fudge things a little bit and move things around to try to like make these things work. And obviously because Green Arrow is, is you know, once we got back in issue seven, 
um, I had to like deal with things, you know, I had to deal with the fact that he comes back and he's like, what do you mean there's not a Justice League, you know, and, and the fact that he doesn't trust, he's having some trust issues in the Justice League right now. And, and, and some of that is, you know, because he bounced around through time and space and he's not totally sure what he trusts right now. That's what issue seven is about, where he's a little bit like, you know, he's suspicious of things, you know, because imagine he comes back and he's like, he comes back, there's no Justice League, Superman's working with Lex Luthor, Batman's clearly crazy right now, like more crazy than normal. Mm-hmm. And uh, and Wonder Woman is on the run. It's like, what? What happened? <laughs> so there's a part of him, there's that scene in issue seven where he says to Connery, he's like, you know, are we sure we're back in the same timeline? Like, are we sure we're where we're supposed to be? And he's like, yeah, we are. But he's like, ah, oh, there's something off. There's something going on. And uh, so because of that, I had to like rearrange a couple of things. But thankfully, again, 12 has, has never... There's only one little bit in 12 has changed. I don't want to say what it is because it's it's a bit of a spoiler thing, but there was only one tiny, tiny bit at the end of 11 and the beginning of 12 I had to change just because it was a, a plot element I was actually kind of bored with. And so I I, I changed a specific, it was a, I can tell you off the air, but uh, okay. yeah, it was a, it was a kind of a, a silly thing that I was like, oh, I've already done this, people already done this. I'm, I'm going to tweak this part. That was the only thing that really changed between 11 and 12. Uh, but now we're, you know, after that, we'll dive into absolute power and, you know, people will probably be really surprised the direction the book uh, takes for the summer. Yeah, I'm very excited to see that. I mean, I think that when that crossover was announced, I was pretty stoked because I've been digging what like Wade's been doing with like, you know, World's well, Finest. Yeah, World's Finest is great. Yeah. And, um, you know, obviously seeing Ollie teaming up with Waller is definitely interesting. And like the repercussions of what that'll have on his relationships it's kind of oh, what yeah. made me think, like, especially with Dinah. But what, yeah. and, like, another thing that I, yeah, I forgot to mention too, like, you were yeah. responsible for bringing Connor back also and Robin. And then yeah. having him back with Ollie has been just like yeah. amazing to see. Uh, what are your favorite characters besides Ollie to write, or which ones have you? Oh, man. I, to write more? I really like, I really like writing uh, Roy. Like, I have, you know what, dude? It's funny. Like, <laughs> I love writing Roy. I, I really love writing Molly. And I love writing Connor. I like writing Roy. But um, recently I got to introduce, you know, uh, re- reintroduce Mia and Miko um, and like Arrowette and bring them in, into the book. And also they're there with um, Red Canary is in that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I really like writing all of them. Miko was really fun to write because she has a little bit of like, you know, like Damien kind of rubbed off on her. She was already, she always had an attitude, like a chip on her shoulder, which is funny because that's like a, that's like a weird arrow character thing where they all have a chip on their shoulder, you know, mm-hmm. they're all a little cocky. They're all a little bit of bravado, you know, trying to, trying to, to show up with their chest out kind of thing, you know, like that's a little bit of their attitude. Um, but yeah, man, I like, I like writing Miko. Uh, Dinah's really fun to write. Yeah, she'll be back in the book. She'll come back. She's going to come back around in the book and stuff. I, I wanted her, you know, um, I really liked what Kelly was doing with Birds of Prey. And I was, I had told them from the very beginning, like, I would I would put her back so that uh, Kelly could have her in Birds of Prey. Um, but yeah, I like, I like writing uh, uh, Dinah too, man. They're all fun to write. I mean, I can hear their voices in my head. And like, just now I had to turn in a, what, what's called a lettering draft. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like when the art comes in, I go back through the art and the dialogue and make sure it works and be like, what do I cut? Before it even gets lettered, I try to go through it and, and be like, this isn't working. This isn't working. Cut this, cut that. You know, it's one of my favorite parts of the job. I actually like this part a lot. I was going through just reading their dialogue and just kind of like laughing at myself about it. You know, there's like this, there's this love with each other, but there's also frustration with each other. You know, mm-hmm. it's funny because I think the, the, I might be wrong on this, but like, you know, the Superman family, I almost feel like they're all love, all support all the time, you know? Like, there's no antagonism. There's no, like, sibling rivalry there, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, the Bat family has it a little bit, but they're all so emo at the same time. It kind of doesn't count. But then when you get to the Arrow family, you know, there's a bit of, like, smacking each other in the back of the head. You know, there's a bit more, like, what were you thinking? You know, there's a little bit more antagonism between them two. Um, there's a lot of love like they still really love each other but they're not afraid to kind of give each other shit i guess is, is a little little more elbow and a little bit more like like oh roy what did you do man like there's a <laughs> bit more of, of that to it you know and uh there's a bit more jokiness with each other a little bit more like they, i feel like they like to poke each other more you know um than the rest and 
of the of the families. Like, I think the closest you can get to that is probably like the Green Lantern characters with like Hal and John and Guy and them, you know, and Kyle. I think they definitely like to rib each other a little bit. Yeah. Um, but uh yeah, like I mean that's really that's one of the things about about this book of like which characters I like is it really I really like writing them together. Like that's it. You know, I like writing them together and you know, I like writing the kind of the back and forth they have with each other, even when they're in the middle of a fight scene, they still kind of are like, yeah, you know, elbowing each other about stuff. So it's it's uh it's just really fun to write them together. Yeah. So I know you can't tell me like how far in advance that you are with the series, but you know, mm-hmm. obviously you've gotten extended twice now and you are at yeah. least writing, I mean, up to 13, at least that's been announced, but well, how, f- right, you know, go, go ahead. I was going to say like how far out, if given the chance or even like the desire to continue writing, because I know you love the character, how mm-hmm. far could you see yourself uh, going in terms of this? Like how many stories you know, do you have in your head? Uh, I have a few. I mean, really, the, like I said before, the biggest priority was getting the family together, you know? And, you know, 12, I think, like, I, I, the ending of 12 has been the plan from the beginning. Like, there's a scene at the end of 12 that has been like, oh, this is what this book has been about in the beginning. Um, and then after that, we go into the crossover. And then I do have a, a few more ideas after that. Like, I could, I don't think I could write this book for like years and years at this point. And also, I mean, just being really frank, you know, it's like, my schedule, and I'm, I'm pretty honest about this with people, um, my schedule is crazy. Like, I'm obviously writing a lot of books, and I've been writing a lot of books for a very long time. I figured out a couple of weeks ago um, that I had written 500 comic books in 10 years, in a 10-year time span. Um, so that means that basically it was a book a week for 10 years. And it's like, as we talk about, I have two children. Like, mm-hmm. I have... You know, it's like I've been going hard for 10 years. And so uh, not to say I'm taking my foot off the gas. It's just that, like, I just know that at some point it's funny, man. I'll go on these trips and stuff or I'll go go do stuff and I'll realize, like, oh, man, I need like a, a creative uh, reset in some places. And so I do feel I'll probably take my foot off. It's weird to take my foot off the gas, but it's like, you know, when I was on Flash, when I was on Flash, which was like, you know, it was every other week, right? It was two two books a month for almost five years. The thing that I would always tell people, like the comparison I'd always give was that I was like, it's like you're running a marathon. And then while you're running the marathon, you actually start thinking about it. And you're like, I can run better than this. Like there's actually a way to run better than this, but I can't stop right now because I have to keep going, right? Mm-hmm. Like you have, to, you have to keep the marathon up. And, uh, but that's been on my mind a lot. The lately, like, even when I was on Flash, I was thinking about this where I'm like, oh man, at some point I have to like get off the, the path, you know, and, and like stretch a bit and then mm-hmm. be like, okay, here's what I gotta do next. And then get back in the marathon and run. And then, you know, I'll probably run faster than I was basically because I will use what I've learned. Right. Right. And when I got off Flash, I mean, you know, I went off Flash and I dived into man, when Flash ended that was 22. Yeah. I dived into stuff real fast. You know, it was like Robin, uh, planning for a dark crisis. Like there was, I, I was, I dive right back into stuff so quickly that it wasn't like, Oh no, flash, ah, stretch for a little bit. It was like, Oh no, I'm gonna do a crisis event. <laughs> so, you know, it was like, I went right back into it so quickly. So even with green arrow, it, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, I could see myself taking a break um, and then coming back to the character at a later, at a later time. You know, I, I, I can see that happening. Um, Cause I still have a lot of ideas for the character in my head and stuff I want to do. Cause that's funny about the book right now is the book has been uh, fairly cosmic, yeah. you know, it's been like, it's not a green arrow book where it's like him and star city. It's been him like, Oh no, I'm off. You know, he's on alien planets. He's in the future, you know, um, He's bouncing around. At one point, I was going to have him go back in time. But it was like, I didn't have room for that. Like, I have, you know, because I wanted to, the, Jeff had touched on it too. Jeff did a story where Roy and, and Oliver got trapped in the Golden Age for a little bit, which explains why he was in the Golden Age and the Seven Soldiers and all that. Yeah, I wanted to visit all that. I just didn't have time. And, um, you know, so it's like, I know that, so I'm going through this big, like, kind of cosmic thing that's like a bigger story. And then we're going to do an event it's like, I would like to do a bunch of street level stories with him, you know? So it's yeah, like to oh get yeah. to that. So it's like, you know, I still have a lot of stories to tell. I mean, we'll, we'll see, like, we'll see, you know, it, it's really, it depends on a lot of things, but I do have a lot more stories to tell with him. 
Cool. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm here for all of it. I, I love Green Arrow, so I don't want to see it go away. So at least if you have to take a step back, hopefully they just keep it going. Oh, no, it would, continue. Book it, would, it would definitely continue. I, I uh, knock on wood. I, I think it would definitely uh, continue when I leave. I think he's doing well enough, and I think uh, people are responding well to it. And like, I think that we're entering this this moment for DC, but also with this character where it's like, it's just a good time to like let these books grow you know let them let them build their audiences and you know just keep yeah building momentum versus like rushing things yeah dude the, the, that's the thing that you know i've been going back and reading a lot of 80s dc comics and i'm like oh, man, man dude they did every fucking character back then like i read phantom oh, stranger dude. with the mcnola the keith giffen dr yeah. fate miniseries like the you know the trevor von eden green arrow with with mike w bar like yeah. there's all this great stuff and then it's like and i'm not trying to like talk shit about dc like i love dc but it's like there came hey. a point where like they stopped taking those risks and like showcasing some of those characters like i'm not saying you need an ongoing but give me a miniseries once in a while with some of like the tertiary characters well it's funny because i don't even know about the miniseries thing because it's like you know it's funny like there's a minute there where everybody was like, we want more miniseries. And then you do more miniseries. And like, I don't know, we want ongoing. <laughs> it's like, it gets it gets tough, you know? I mean, really what it always comes down to, and this is something I've been thinking about a lot the last few years, is it's just like, what is that? What is that pitch, right? Like, and I think that's a part of it with some of this stuff is you have to have somebody. It's funny, and, and I've seen this a lot. Like, there's many factors. There's many factors to consider, but you have to have a creator you have to have somebody in, in internally like an editor who's passionate about a project plus you have a creator that's really passionate about that character but then you also just have to have like a really you know a uh, compelling story and like something to say about that character and like one of the things that's been a bummer over the years is, is that like i'll see people who are just you know creators who are like huge fans of a character and then when you talk to them about it they don't actually have a story you know they they have like a short story they don't have like a thing for mm -hmm. that story that character to do and that's why sometimes it becomes like a non-starter sometimes you know but that being said you know it's like listen like i remember years ago man way back way 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 back when when i was first starting out writing i went to this convention at uh, long beach comic-con i think it was like the first long beach comic-con and you know that was a, basically like a really early there weren't a lot of conventions in LA at that time mm -hmm. right it was like San Diego and that was kind of it like I don't think WonderCon had made the move down yet mm -hmm. um but there was Long Beach Comic Con and I used to live in uh I went to college in Long Beach so uh I went to that convention and it was cool it was modest you know kind of modest con and there was this um panel that was like a class you know and it was you know those ones that are like more of a classroom kind of thing yeah um i don't remember, I don't remember if long beach comic-con was a wizard thing or not but basically it was just like this is a you know class and it was with uh stephen wacker and um who at the time was an editor at uh dc and i think this might i might be getting my timeline wrong i feel like it's predated 52 or was around around 52 like it was in that window before he had he hadn't left for marvel yet yeah. and he had this class that was like how to deal with an editor and i was like i'm going to this i'm going to this you know and i went and there was like no one there i feel like in my mind i was the only person there but there might have been like two other people in the room you know I'm talking about like a big panel with two people yeah and uh stephen wacker was like oh well you know he was sort of surprised it was kind of funny he's like, well i invite a special guest because I thought it'd be fun to have a creator to talk to. Um, and it was Jeff Johns. And this is like, Absolutely. this is like, you know, I don't want to say peak Jeff, peak Jeff Johns, but you know, you're talking about, he just come off Hawkman. You know, they're going into, Infinite Crisis hadn't started yet, but I think it had been announced, right? So like, we're going into that. Like he's still on Flash, you know, he's still, he's still doing it. And I'll be getting some of the timeline wrong, but I sat there and I listened to them talk, you know, and it was very educational because I got to ask a lot of questions. And, you know, again, it was like really nobody in that room. So it really was a lot more of like a one-on-one -on -one conversation. The reason why I'm telling you this is because they talked about this. They talked about these projects and people pitching projects and wanting these kinds of projects. And one of the things he said that really stuck with me, kind of like haunted me in a way, because it made me feel silly at the time because he was like, 
he basically said he was because they were talking about books that get pitched in all the time you know and basically he was like he was like i have the handbook too he was like i have it too like he goes i have those guys like i have them right here behind me you know i have the um the encyclopedias you know he's like we, get, we have the encyclopedias in the office and we also go through them we also try to find these characters you know we're like oh yeah let's do this character that's not book in a long time he's like i have those i have those too it's like it's not like we're not aware those characters exist and you're gonna come into the office and be like there's this character he's called the demon let's do a book and they're gonna be like oh my god we never thought about the demon you're a genius like that doesn't happen you know it's so much more than that it's just more a complicated process and it's like it is funny like it's just and, and i think right now uh you can tell there are there are trying things you know there are more minis there are some books out there you know and and based on what i know about the future there's gonna be more of that like there'll be more stuff coming that are maybe some characters that haven't had a book in a while kind of thing cool um it is exciting it's interesting to see and you can see people that are really passionate about those characters that are coming in and being like i love this character can we do something with it and and it's really awesome when you see somebody come in and, and they're like i have a story you know i mean i i remember working on flash originally and that's it's, it's also it's like story and intent and it's like that's the thing even when i came on flash you know i told that story before like dan rejected it the first time and then the second time i came back around i pitched him essentially what became the book and I had it all mapped out. I had a story, I had something to say, I had something to say about the characters, and I had intent. You know, there's like all these little pieces. And I remember Dan was like, we're doing it. Let's go. Yeah, okay, he got it, you know. And and that's what I sometimes think is uh missing. But I do know there's a lot of cool stuff coming. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of minis out there that are not minis, just just books that are coming that uh I think people will be excited about. And you know, same way with Green Arrow, to bring it back to Green Arrow, it's like that's the kind of stuff that for me it was like even when I was pitching it to the editor who at the time was Ben Abernathy I was like I have a thing here it's not just about I love this character it, which obviously I did but it was like I think there's a missing piece to this and that's the Arrow family and you know Ben Percy had already started bringing those pieces together already like he spent a lot of time especially with with uh, Black Canary mm -hmm. he really put a lot of work into those two characters but it was obviously Roy and Connor and Mia. He he, had, he has a little bit of Mia stuff in there, you know? Um, but he was really the one that he... I feel like he started it off and I just didn't get to, to finish that. And so I was able to take it and run with it. But I had... Uh, I think I told you that story before, right? I had pitched Green Arrow in space way back in like 2010 to mm -hmm. Ben. You know? So I, I still got my way. I was able to do Green Arrow in space. <laughs> <laughs> it was only for two issues. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm like I said, I've been loving Green Arrow. I, I can't wait for more. And it's good to hear that there's plans. I mean, like when they announced the, the Zatanna book, I know it's black label, but I'm fine. I don't care what label it is. I just I want to see some of these other characters. So like that really like excited me and I'm excited to see like what still, else they do. Yeah, I, I will say that like we, I'll probably just end that with this is that like, you know, there's a lot of editors at DC who really love DC they like really love DC and they know it really well. Like it's always fun when I get to talk to editors and I start to see the DC nerd in them, you know, they start to talk about stuff and I'm like, Oh yeah, like you really do, you know, like, Oh, you're like us, you know? And um, I think that like every character, there is a conversation. There is somebody in that building that is like, I want to do a book with this character. It's just about, it's about finding that balance of all those things I was saying to make it happen. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's it's every character. I think everybody's favorite character is somebody that's in that office that's like, I'm gonna figure it out. We're gonna get that book. Uh yeah. Yeah, I would be that person in the office if <laughs> with DC oh, it's like me too. I would probably yeah. be super to all of them. I know I'm a little <laughs> now. So anyway. <laughs> all right. Well before we wrap up, because we spent a lot of time talking DC stuff, but I do want to <laughs> briefly talk about uh the Energon stuff you've been doing with Duke which has been phenomenal yeah. and Cobra commander. Um, yeah. I have not picked up a GI Joe comic book probably since the early two thousands, whenever image had it briefly. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, yeah, I yeah. haven't read GI. Oh no, I did read the, the, the snake eyes book by, by life. I did read that one, but um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, what they've been doing with the energy on transformers, same thing. I, I haven't read transformers comic. I would not pick up any of those titles. I just had no desire, but what's mm -hmm. been going on has been awesome. Duke has been great. And Cobra Commander, this like horror type spin that you've put on it yeah. has been so sick. So I just want to, you know, briefly ask you, like, how did you, were you approached? Did you approach Robert? Like, how did that all come about? So, you know, I have a good relationship with Skybound. I've known them for a long time. You know, I've, I've known them 
before there really even was the skybound i have like known them Mm -hmm. you know and uh i was like really friendly with them and um you know sean mackowitz who's the publisher like i consider him like a good friend you know and uh it's funny like we'll have these calls where we'll talk about planning stuff and then the other half of the call will uh, just be talking about family stuff or toys you know like so we have like a, a really good uh, friendship and um you know they i feel like skybound always kind of looks out for me uh so ba- basically man i don't know dude it, it must have been like six years ago you know, um, it, it must have been that because it was easily over five years ago. Because um, it was in like, not this office, not my last office, but the office before that. I got this call from Skybound and they were just like, if there was ever a licensed book, if Skybound were ever to do licensed books, is there anything you'd be interested in? And I was like, oh, let me think about this. And so I, you know, I made a list and I was going through, but I had also told them, I'm like, listen, you know, I don't think I'll ever do a licensed book again. You know, like, and I, I, the last one I did was Haunted Mansion. I loved it. And that was like a bucket list. That was a bucket list book that I had been wanting to do for a long time. And I'm really proud of it. And I was like, I feel like that was sort of the end of that for me. That was the last like bucket list thing. And I gave him this list and I was like, oh, but there's one other thing, one other book. And I was like, I would love to do uh, G.I. Joe. And I said, I have a whole thing in my head of how I would do it. Like I have a whole like idea in my head about these two pieces you know when it, when it comes to G.I. Joe and when it comes to Cobra and I was like if I ever got an opportunity to you know basically start G.I. Joe over I know what I would do right and I told him that and he was like okay interesting and we kept talking about it over the years you know and then um you know it, it was it was like this bouncing around sort of ongoing conversation for years and years and years and then I think like two years ago I was talking to him about it and it came up, you know, it's like, it would always come in the conversation. And he was like, basically started filling me in a little bit more about how real it was for them, what they were doing and and what he was thinking about. And, you know, obviously getting Daniel to draw transformers and the stuff that Robert wanted to do. And he was like, well, what what do you want to do? And so I explained everything to him. And it was funny, man. I feel like there was never like an offer this one thing is always weird i have no story of like they called me and said do you want this or you have a job it was almost one of those things where it was like i think the moment i had that conversation with them six years ago they just penciled my name and they were just like oh it's gonna be josh and so then it became a question of schedule and time you know i'm I'm exclusive in dc so i had to get special permission from dc to do this and um you know so even on my last contract negotiation this was a part of it was like, well, I have this thing with Skybound and I, I want to do. Um, and, you know, DC was really happy with me uh, at the end of Dark Crisis and going into Superman. So they were like, yeah, that's okay. You can do that and stuff. And I was like, okay, cool. And at the time, I did not expect it to blow up the way it has, you know, like people really like it. It's selling really well. Retailers are really happy with it. Like it's been uh, really, I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure the right word is for it, like empowering, you know, to, to see, you know, maybe people love it. I was telling my wife last night and I was like, I was like, if you had told me three years ago that a Duke comic book would be selling this well <laughs> or people would love it, I would be like, what? Because I'm like, people don't even like Duke. <laughs> uh, Duke's like one of the least liked uh, J. Joe's, I feel like sometimes. Um, but that was also in my head of like, well, how do you make people like Duke? How do you how do you showcase why Duke is dope and how he's a leader? Uh, but yeah, man, there was never there was never like a, a call. It was just it was just like the job was always mine. And uh and then, yeah, man, like two years ago, I wrote an outline, basically outlining out. And it lined up with what Robert was also thinking, you know, and what they were thinking and what they had been talking to Hasbro about. Um, and it just it just worked out. And then I, I got to work, you know, maybe like a year and a half ago on it. I just started writing. And here we are, you know, and I'm, I'm really glad that people seem to dig it. Uh, you know, it seems to like it's funny. It's like I get it's weird man I, I think we talked before like i feel like i live in a bubble those days right like i'm just working you know i'm just tunnel vision, you know and like i think you you've seen like me and my schedule is just a mess you know so it's like i don't know what's going on half the time but a day a, not a day goes by where somebody is like man those gi joe books that are john universe man that's a real hit and i'm like i have no idea <laughs> i'm just like keep working man i am the prize keep working uh even this morning um jeremy adams uh who you know writes uh green lantern he wrote an awesome flash run after me he uh 
he and I were talking really early this morning, like first thing. And then he was just like, man, those, those that Joe books, man. And I was like, oh, cool. I'm glad. I'm glad people dig it. Uh, yeah. No, dude, it's been like, you know, I'm not in the shop as much as I was obviously when I was working there, but yeah. like the excitement surrounding Energon has just been like, it's crazy, dude. Like, first of all, Transformers selling what it did. G.I. Joe books selling what they did, you know, like, oh, and I think it was an interesting choice to not name them G.I. Joe, not G.I. Joe Duke, G.I. Joe Cobra Commander. Was yeah. that your choice or was that Skybound? No, no, I could be, I could be straight with it. No, Cobra Commander. Yes. Cobra Commander. Yes. That was, that came organically through the conversations. I was on a call with Robert, Sean and Daniel, and we were talking about how important Cobra Commander was to like everything. And I was like, you know, we're talking about this character being so important, but then he's only going to have like a few pages in these books. Like we got to, we got to amp it up, you know, and that's how the conversation was like, well, let's do a, let's do a, a Cobra Commander book. Um, you know, I, I think one of the things that Robert approached this with, and I agreed with him, you know, I, I saw what he was saying and what he was, what he was doing, but he was like, with some of the stuff, you got to really do things that are unexpected, right? Like what is, don't, don't do the expected thing you know and uh because then everyone's like oh there's gonna do this this and this and then it's like you gotta you gotta swerve them you know a little bit and and that was part of it was like that's the expectation you know so instead let's but also we're into building this new world too right there is no gi joe in this world that doesn't exist mm -hmm. so you know we can't have any mention of it there's no it doesn't it's not it doesn't exist so it made sense. And if we're really telling a story about Duke, let's call it Duke. And, uh, and, you know, ultimately it was the right call, you know, with both Duke and Cobra Commander. I mean, again, you know, they both sold like incredibly well. So it's like, well, all right, cool. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's, let's roll with this. And, uh, yeah, man, it's, it's interesting. I haven't been to a convention since New York, but even when I was in New York, I, people were coming up to me and they were like, it was funny, man. I, I would hear this repeatedly in New York Comic Con. People would come up and they'd be like, well, I never thought I'd buy a G.I. Joe comic book, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, I, like, I kind oh. of understand it. I get it, you know? Yeah, I yeah. But, I mean, like, okay, so you're wrapping up. Obviously, they're probably issue miniseries. Do you have any more? To, like... uh, uh, I mean, I'm very much involved in the Energon universe. You know, it's definitely a, a major part of my life. Um, okay. That's probably say right now i mean just keep just keep reading <laughs> i get it i get it i know you can't tell yeah, me much yeah. that hasn't been announced but i just was curious that's a great answer um yeah. well i like i said like i'm always stoked for everything you're doing you know whether it's your creator own stuff dark ride has been phenomenal it's such a great book oh thanks dude. Um, yeah. very excited for everything you got coming out is there anything that you can maybe tease like any plans no, for you so. can even say like is there any new <laughs> titles that you might be working on without calling names oh, on them you know i think if i if i took on any more work man i think my wife would kill me um <laughs> well you're wrapping up a couple so you have space no 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 i don't <laughs> i'm already i'm dude i i am so bogged down and stuff i'm 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 definitely buried in work i have like i have a wall over here that has all my stuff on it i'm looking at it and i'm like nope no room <laughs> like uh no, but I mean, yeah, like, I think the stuff we're doing with Superman is going to be really cool uh, this summer and the fall. And, you know, Batman and Robin, I have a, an arc coming up in Batman and Robin that I'm, like, really, really excited about uh, over the summer. And, uh, what else is going on, man? I have a lot of books in my head. It's funny. I have to think about what's been announced yet. I'm, I'm definitely working on a lot of stuff that hasn't been announced. So that'll be, like, 2025 stuff that I think people will be uh, excited about. I hope they are. So I'm going to put a lot of work into some some cool projects next year. Cool. Well, I'm excited for, for all that. I'll definitely be bugging you to come back and talk about yeah, those for projects. Sure. Yeah. You got them. Uh, thank you as always for taking time to chat with me. I always love talking comic books with you. Yeah, too. me too. Me too, for sure. Uh, thanks, man. I'll catch you later. Cool.